Hello, YouTube! It is me, John Avenger, once again. I'm back, and I'm doing another review of a really great animated film. This is from 2018, one of the best films I saw last year. In my opinion, the best animated film I saw last year. I did like Into the Spider-Verse, I just didn't like the third act with the flashy uh, effects, you know, just kind of took me out of it. This is Disney and Pixar's, one of their best sequels, Incredibles 2. Simple title? Great freaking movie. Now, I didn't see this in theaters. I skipped it because, uh, you know, again, that was a title money. And, uh, you know, a lot of movies came out that summer that I wanted to see. And there were two big movies in July that I had to see. So I had to save my, my money. But this was worth seeing. I saw this in college last year. And I was laughing my ass off. It's one of the funniest movies that I saw last year. And it feels like, a, like an MCU movie. It feels like a Marvel movie just animated. And uh, this is a great sequel to, to one of the best uh, the, uh, Pixar movies, one of the best superhero movies I've ever seen uh, that's not live action, uh, The Incredibles. And yeah, most of the cast comes back to the voices, except for the voice of uh, Dash, because for whatever reason, the, the kid probably was too old to do the voice, so they casted a new actor. But he sounds fine. His voice is kind of interchangeable. It's not like it was a distinct voice like Rick and Morty, but this movie was worth the 14-year wait, considering that it took over a decade to get this movie made and get the exact cast back, except, you know, uh, for uh, Mr. Incredible, for, you know, the um, Elastigirl and Violet and, um, and uh, you know, the baby, because the baby is a voice. He laughs a lot and says cookie and, you know, a couple of words. And uh, yes, you know, it was a hard act to follow the first one. Now, I prefer the first one, but this is still a great freaking movie on its own. It's like an hour and 40 minutes. It goes by real quick. It doesn't feel too long. At least it wasn't two hours. Like Cars is just freaking boring. And it literally takes place uh, hours after the first movie. Like just as soon as the, the first movie ended with the Mole Man or whatever, uh, the Tunneler or whatever his name is, uh, he was, um, uh, you know, he, he was introducing himself to the cast, cast and the characters and they have to fight him. And that's basically how it opens. Now, there's, the movie has flaws. I don't like the villain in this movie. Screenslaver, I'm not going to say the twist if you haven't seen the movie, but I thought this villain was kind of lame. I, I liked the name. I liked uh, the voice that they used, but, and, the, and, the, and it has a, look, a cool look, but at the end, it just was not Syndrome from the first one. You know, he had charisma, and he was an asshole, and was dark, and Jason Lee's voice is unmatched. So it was a hard act to follow the first movie with the villain, unless you brought Syndrome back, but you couldn't because he died at the end. But anyway, yeah, the 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 the, the, new, the supporting cast. There's some good ones here. You you got um, Catherine Keener, she's in the movie. Bob Odenkirk, he's in the film as well. Jonathan Banks is in the movie. Uh, Michael Giacchino returned to do the score for the first movie. It's a great score. It feels like a superhero movie. And let's face it, we're not going to get a Fantastic Four movie better than this or the first Incredibles. It's a family of superheroes that have most of the powers of the Fantastic Four, um, except for a flame guy. There's a the muscle, like the thing. You have the girl that the, the guy that the girl that stretches. You have the guy that stretches. That's um, Mr. Fantastic, and you have uh, the girl that that can do uh, waves. That's Invisible Woman, and but instead of instead of Dash would be basically a Human Torch, except he can't turn on fire. Uh, now the the baby can do that. The baby's one of the best parts of the movie. Jack Jack is absolutely adorable. He's, he has one of the funniest scenes in any Pixar movie with the raccoon. I, it's like I was watching Rocket Raccoon fight the baby, and it's so funny. It's just hilarious. It's like a Looney Tunes cartoon. And this movie costs $200 million. Hey, Dark Phoenix, this is what a $200 million movie looks like. Not your bad CGI freaking train scene. Not a freaking Sophie Turner's face breaking because she can't act. Not a... Quicksilver running into the sky, not the freaking scenes in space. This is what a $200 million movie looks like. And this movie made over a billion dollars. Well deserved. Because the money's on the screen and it's just great animation, just like the first one. The cast from the original is just great. I, uh, you know, freaking Craig T. Nelson is always good as, as uh, Mr. Fant uh, Mr. Incredible. He has a great voice, a great look to him. You know, he has to learn about new math, which is funny. <laughs> new math, yeah. He 
He's just, he sounds like a dad, you know, his voice. Holly Hunter has the hottest Southern accent I've ever heard on a woman in a film. I just, I don't know what it is. It's just her voice is very hot. I just, you know, it's like, you know, danger. Oh my God. And I'm like, it's like a, it's like a really sweet Southern woman with, you know, but she's much older now. She's like in her sixties now, but she's just, her voice is so sexy. And the fact that she has a lot of screen time in this is badass. It wasn't feminism. It wasn't SJWs. Elastigirl was kick-ass in the first movie, guys. And in this one, she has to take the mantle of being the, the provider for the family. And she's badass. Her bike scene and the, when she's stretching on the train, that's awesome. When she's uh, chasing the screen slaver, she's a total badass. She's a hot woman, you know, voiced by a hot actress that won an Oscar, Holly Hunter. Just, I, it's, just it's weird. I know I like older women, but that's just who I am. I like all kinds of women. I'm heterosexual. What can I say? Can't help myself. Uh, the voice of Violet, I like that she's less emo in this than in the first one. She's not hiding as much. There's a hilarious scene in the end the, when they go to a restaurant and she's like, there's a boy that she likes there and she's like drinking water. It's a great scene. Like, it's just hilarious. Like, she's trying to, it's just, you know, it, she, she's a teenager and I, I get the, the, you know, her angst. But, uh, you know, Dash, I like his his character, you know, in the first movie that he's like the Flash and I love the Flash. DC, I want a, Mar I want a Flash movie. After seeing this in Shazam, I want a Flash movie. And also the new villain, you know, like I said, it's a weak point of the movie, but it doesn't hurt the movie. The film is still very funny, very entertaining. The action scenes were <clears throat> are mind-blowing. Let me get some water because I'm talking about this movie, gushing about it because it's a great freaking movie. And yes, it's more for adults than for kids, but the kids are going to love the action sequences. It's not as, you know, as too adult, like Toy Story 3, and uh, Inside Out is more for adults, but this one is a mix. It's got great action scenes for the adults and, and the, some of the humor and the, and the adult, you know, uh, thematic elements. But it's got great animation and funny gags with the, for the kids, and they're going to laugh their asses off. I saw this in college with a bunch of uh, students, and they were laughing out loud, and they clapped when it was over. It's just a badass sequel. We had to wait over a decade for this, and we can't get a good Fantastic Four movie now. Or... I don't know, like a good X-Men movie anymore. Hopefully with the MCU, that'll be rectified. But here, this movie was awesome. I also like the side characters that they have. Um, let me see the, the rest of the voice cast you have. Um, I'm never going to remember the other characters. There was um, Bob Odenkirk is a super fan who leads a telecommunications company with his sister Evelyn. I'm, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, Captain Keener, she's always good to that. Bill Wise is a pizza delivery man and hypnotized to pose as the screen slaver. That's that's just a, a, a twist. Uh, he's not the screen slaver. You have Brad Bird coming back. He's hilarious as Edna. Darling, yeah, I take care of the baby, darling. And, like, he's fantastic. Like, I love the Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. I'm not apologizing for that. His voice is hilarious. And he's voicing a woman. And she's one of the funniest characters in the first movie. Just She leaves an impression on you. Edna E. Mode, yeah. Jonathan Banks is Rick Dicker, a government agent, yeah, because they have to have that in a superhero movie. Michael Bird is Violet's love interest. Yeah, he does a good job for his small scenes. Uh, Sophie Bush is Karen Void. And, uh, they basically do like Deadpool 2. They, they hire other superheroes that show up at the end and do some cool shit. It's really good. You got her. She's a aspiring superhero with the power to create portals, like Rick from Rick and Morty. Phil Lamar is Crush Hour. And a, cr cr crush Hour. An aspiring superhero with the ability to tentatively crush objects. Yeah, in your face, freaking Sophie Turner's uh, Jean Grey. That's uh, how you do it. Um, Paul Edding is Gus Burns, Reflux. He's an elderly superhero who can vomit hot lava. Granted, I don't like vomit and piss jokes or whatever, but here it's a cool thing. He vomits lava kind of like the, the Extremis did in, in uh, Iron Man 3. Isabella Rossellini is an ambassador. Yeah, John Ratzenberger, because he is the underminer, not the mole man. He's a mole man, though, basically. Underminer. He's in the beginning, because Ratzenberger is Pixar's uh, golden goose. He's been in every Pixar movie that's ever been made, so he's a badass. Uh, Barry Bostwick is the mayor. You got two detectives, and Kimberly Adder Clark, Honey, Honey Best, Frozone's wife. And, of course, Samuel Jackson. How could I forget about him as Frozone? He's always good in almost everything he's in, except for The Spirit. That movie's god-awful. But, yeah, this movie was a worth waiting a long time for. It made a ton of money. It's one of the best sequels of 2018. That wasn't a Marvel movie. 
and a great surprise because considering how long we waited for it and it delivered and it didn't please everybody because some people didn't like the first one they thought it was too dark but this one they definitely toned it down uh the, the you know the darkness they there's still dark moments but it's very funny and it feels like a marvel movie the money's on the screen the characters still have great chemistry with each other the ending the third act is awesome uh violet there's a scene that she wants to denounce her superhero powers and said no i'm done and then, but then at the end she comes back with uh, dash and jack jack and uh, it's just it's so funny man this this family is awesome if they ever do a third one i hope they do but yeah there there was a there's also a a, sp a warning it says here that there were um scenes that cause epileptic seizures like uh that spider-man movie last year the scenes with when they're flashing in the in the other dimension when uh when kingpin is in the train or whatever that scene almost made me just wince because i'm like oh my god there's too much animation here the scenes with the screensaver was like Ch -ch 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 in the city that is not recommended for people that suffer from epileptics so be warned warning don't show this movie if you suffer from that unless you can keep it under control you know because that's how uh poor um cameron boyce passed away so i'm sorry but anyway yeah uh, on a lighter note, you got uh, uh, the Alice of Women fi Film Journalists. They gave Best Animated Female Holly Hunter as Elastigirl. Yeah, she won an, uh, an award for that. Because again, sexiest Southern accent ever. My friend Josh can de definitely vouch for me on that. Because I love the way a woman sounds. She doesn't sound like she smokes cigarettes like poor Linda Hamilton in Dark Fate. Like, I'll be back. No, I'm sorry. Linda Hamilton's voice, just it's not sexy anymore. It's just dying but anyway but but holly hunter is almost the same age as linda hamilton and she still has a sexy voice i've always thought that after hearing so many british accents it's good to hear a nice southern twang that's cute and motherly she has a she's a super mom and she's a badass not a sjw character but yeah um this movie was worth it it's not just a great kids movie it's a great animated superhero movie that kicked ass all over and, and this could have easily been in the mcu if you had this crossover with like the avengers it'd be one of the best movies of all time but it, it this came out a few months after infinity war and it's definitely up there it doesn't have the stupid ending that that movie had but you know where they disappear but you've seen infinity war anyway a possible uh sequel let's see following release of incredibles 2 brad bird acknowledged that the film's strong production schedule resulted in many plot lines and ideas he had for the film being cut I would like a third movie and then just end it. Don't do a fourth one. Cast member Samuel Jackson and Sophia express interest in reprising their roles. Producer John Walker would not rule a third film out. Yeah, do it, but don't wait 10 years. You don't want Craig T. Nelson to do this when he's like 90. You know, you get him while, he, while he's still alive. Because, you know, this was worth him coming back. Him and Holly Hunter still are fantastic as husband and wife. And they're just voices. Yet they put so much depth and so much emotion and so much gravitas with their wonderful voices that they've been actors for decades and they can and they still got it they still got it i wish i could say the same thing about poor mark hamill and freaking harrison ford and carrie fisher in kk wars they were trying but they they gave them nothing to do and they wasted their talents here these talents are not wasted the new kid that does the voice of dash is great uh the original cast is great they come back i do miss jason lee but you know he he, he left his mark in the first one the animation is freaking fantastic. I love it. I love. It's a great looking film. It's got a huge scale. The budget's on the screen. It's got a great score. Nothing's bad in the movie except for the villain. I thought the villain just kind of lame. It's, it's a twist that you kind of see coming from the first like time you see meet Screen Slaver. But I'm not going to say a word if you haven't seen this. But this is awesome. I wish that this movie was mine, but it's not. It's my sister's. But uh, it's a, it's a sequel worth seeing uh, again. And what a way to end, uh, you know, to, to, to end the first half of 2018 with this. This came out in June, and it was so worth it. I wish I could have seen this in theaters. I hope they do re-release it. I want to go see it, because when Toy Story got re-released, I saw but one and two. And, uh, yeah, if you have kids, I strongly, I strongly recommend this movie. If you've seen the first one and they love it, this is a definitely a worthy sequel. Some people say, you know, some of the Pixar sequels are forced like the car sequels and, and Finding Dory, this one is not. This is a must-see, a high recommendation. If you get, if you get Disney+, Plus, watch it there. If you get this on Blu-ray, watch it on, on not Netflix, because Disney's not on Netflix anymore, but watch it on cable. Watch this freaking movie. It's a must-see.
I did not re I did not regret seeing this in college. I laughed. I clapped when it was over. It's a great freaking sequel and it was worth it. And like I said before, Holly Hunter's character is a badass completely. Not because she's OP, because she has a great voice and she her character's great to root for. I love her new outfits and everything. It's just great, great freaking movie. Just ugh. Man, I wish that this was in the MCU. But anyway, thank God that Tony could never touch this movie. Disney has it for life. You can't touch it. But Disney and Pixar. Great job, Pixar. Great job, Brad Bird. You, you, you bought a sequel that we waited for over a decade, and it paid off. One flaw, but it still paid off. Anyway, that's enough of me get gushing over Incredibles 2. This was incredible, indeed. And so worth the long wait. And there's so many movies I wish that were like this. Why couldn't we get great sequels like this? And, you know, Fallout and Infinity War and Endgame. We need more move sequels like this and less Independence Day Resurgence and Last Jedi and freaking uh, what, whatever. Any sequel, even Episode Nine. I'm sorry. You're not going to be better than this or that or that or that. And you're sure as hell not going to be better than that. Yeah. There, I went there. But anyway, this movie is fantastic. And I can't say any more because, you know... Just see it for yourself, and you'll see how mind-blown you are at the end. But anyway, this movie, The uh, Incredibles 2, is worth it. It's a great animated film. I finally got to review it. It's badass. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next review.